Hello and welcome to the Y2PV Podcast, where I, Soraz, and one other guest discuss anything and everything Y2PMV. This is episode 9 featuring RazQ. RazQ has been around for nearly a decade and has made a huge number of high quality videos. He is one of the most popular Y2PM viewers on YouTube, amassing nearly 65,000 subscribers in his 9 years on YouTube. RazQ is quite passionate about his videos, thinking outside of the box for his visuals on every video he puts out. In this episode, we talk about the Kitchen Gun collab, which was uploaded on his channel, his views on being separated from the community, and the discovery of Unreal Engine for his videos. Then, at the halfway point, we watch some of his personal favorite vids, and he talks through the process of making them. Please go check out his YouTube channel, RazQ, and follow him on Twitter, at RazQ35. To those listening on Spotify and other platforms, you can watch the videos we talk about in the video version of the podcast on my YouTube channel, Soraz. Also, new YTPMV podcast logo. It's made by my good friend, at MetaBlaziken, so please go give him a follow. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy. We'll go ahead and start with your background. Uh, how did you get into YTPMV, and why did you start making them? Well, I found them like through Finnish YouTube poops. Like those got shared like uh, in the school, and I started making those actually first. And then I found like the musical side, and I got addicted a bit to it because I have a musical background. I like used to take piano lessons and everything. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's how I found them. Yeah, and uh, did you did you find out? like the name youtube poop and you just started like searching up more and everything and looking no there around. was like some creators who were like who also made ytpm alongside like youtube poops okay and uh what what kind of like pushed you over the edge to start making them uh i just wanted to like have a hobby to do something because i really didn't ha- i really didn't really have anything mm-hmm. and uh i just started to make those I get you. So your first, I I was looking, I was looking through your channel because uh, before this, um, I so I started in like that's when I started making videos is like 2013. So that's when I like really really started. So like 2011 and 2012 videos sometimes I just haven't seen because I just wasn't around as much. And uh, some of your some of your old videos were like very like good for the time. I would say. Uh, and everything like it like they had some good audio and everything did did you like try to focus on like any particular like visual or audio or anything or did you just kind of make them to make them uh i just made them and i improved on the way basically i i think i was used to get like positive like reviews for my like videos and everything but there was like this guy called life waste who kept like shit talking my well it wasn't shit talking it was like fair points like hey so you should do this and this and this and it like it really helped me out like around 2011 oh that's good yeah <laughs> the ytpmv and like toxic people kind of sometimes go hand in no, hand he wasn't toxic had points <laughs> he wasn't flaming or anything had points like every it just pointed out every mistake like really straight yeah 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 i was just saying like it's good to hear that somebody back then was like actually like helping with like constructive criticism and everything rather yeah. than i mean at one point i think i got angry at him and said like why do you even watch my videos if they all like have mistakes like this and then he said because i wanted to see you improve oh that's nice that's cool yeah uh i i i don't know if i've ever talked to life waste but uh i'm pretty sure he's one of omni's friends right yeah he is he's yeah, part of the yeah. israel community yeah yeah you uh yeah. were you friends with omni back in the day and and were were you in like very many uh skype chats and everything i mean kinda i guess but we didn't like dm talk or anything usually mm. he was just there yeah <laughs> yeah uh, he also knows like a lot of Finnish YouTube poop people, so that's also like the, the reason. Yeah, yeah. And I was gonna ask. Uh, speaking of like Finnish YTP, uh, is there much of like a Finnish YTP and V community or? Uh... Nah, not really. Mm. There's some single guys who make like me and others, but I'm the only one who's like in that group who makes oh. this kind of stuff. Yeah. 
So, uh, moving forward past, like, uh, down, like, the timeline in, like, 2013, 2014, uh, I would say that, like, just from, like, a, uh, somebody looking at your channel and not knowing the background, that that is when I would say you kind of started coming into your own. Would you agree with that? Or would you say a different no, time? Well, it started around that, but there's some certain thing when I really improved. And yeah. that's like International Wrestling Festival 2016. Yeah. And wh how, why is that? Well, uh, I found out you can change the type of keyframes in Sony Vegas because I just kept using linear keyframes. <laughs> you, you didn't know that till 2016? No. And oh my God. neither did anyone else because when I tweeted about it, I got like 20 responses. Oh my God, I didn't notice. <laughs> and like from like finish normal big youtubers and everything it was like so weird oh my god <laughs> ah like like that kind of thing i've i've made so many like uh revelations in like the past year of like you don't know that you don't know that and then uh other people will be like oh you know about velocity in vegas right and i'm like i don't even i don't know about that uh i i i wish that there was I more about the velocity yeah, tutorials and everything. I just found out about Velocity and started using it like <laughs> two or three months ago. <laughs> but, I know uh, about Velocity because it was used in CS frag movies. Oh, that's yeah. Like the, it was the basic tool, like how to make them. So I, that's like the first thing I knew about Sony Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Were you using Sony Vegas before Y2PMV or? Well, yeah, it was basically I would render my fraps videos with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so nothing like too in depth or whatever. No. So you mentioned uh Unreal Engine for or sorry, like IWF 2016 and everything. Uh and then you said on the doc uh discovery of Unreal Engine 4. Uh were other people using Unreal Engine 4 or how did you find out about that? No no one else from the community was using it like uh I found about it when I was like studying game developing in school and uh, there was two options like Unity and then you had Unreal Engine and we were making some projects on Unreal Engine and then I realized like wait you can like make stuff with this and uh, because it's a game engine you can render in real time so I was like oh, oh my god this has a lot of potential and this is like user friendly compared to something like Cinema 4D or an After Effects like 3D stuff and so on. Mm-hmm. So it was like a really user friendly and uh, easy to use and completely free. Damn, that's really cool. So would you would you say it's like for the purpose of white PMV or at least your visuals in your case? Uh, would you say it's almost better than like After Effects and using that kind of thing, or is there just like a different place for both of those programs? I mean, if you have to make delicate three D stuff, then yeah, it is better. And plus, you can render in real time, which the other pro other programs lack. In lack. Mm. Yeah, that that sounds pretty useful. Uh, how did you like develop a style inside of Unreal Engine Four without like seeing any any anybody else's like videos or anything? Well, it's just, it was just user friendly because I tried to do that before with like I tried to use Cinema Four D before and I li didn't like it at all and. And other like Maya and all that other stuff people use, but it was like it was like way user friendly. That's mm. pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. So what what kind of made you decide to focus more on like visual visuals on YTPMV and everything, uh, rather than like any of the other gags or audio or whatever? Well, I don't know. I already ha I always have like felt like making visuals is like way like easier for me than audio because like I can do basic audio but that's about it really so it was like a comfort thing okay plus you can watch Netflix at the same time when you make visuals but with audio that's kind of distracting mm, that, <laughs> yeah that is true <laughs> I guess I've never thought about that because when I edit like I I open as like a show like recently when I was making the Terry Crews video my latest one I watched the whole season of like, was it the bad boys, the superhero thing? Oh, Amazon I uh, Prime. I have no idea. <laughs> Hold on, what's the? Oh, I need to check that. 
Oh, it's the boys. Yes, the boys. The boys. Well, I watched the whole series, like to, to like while editing the visuals for the Terry Crews video. So Holy that's shit. basically how I work. That, that that's cool though. Honestly, like I guess I because I do like visuals and audio at the same time. I guess I like I never even considered it being a possibility to like watch stuff and make stuff at the same time. But I guess I guess it makes sense. It's like kind of similar to uh, like drawing or art in a way where you're just like animating and keyframing and everything. Yeah. Out of your videos, top to bottom, old to new, what would you say your favorite? What are, What are your favorite visuals that you've done? Because you've well, you've done some pretty technically impressive vi uh, visuals, honestly. Well, my favorite video was visually. Is probably the Hanzo one, the Devon Six Sonata. Okay. Because I used a lot of the. Basically, there's a green screen on the Wazir Time map of the Overwatch in the Hollywood, but it has really bad lighting, so you can't really use it unless you have like, well, better chroma key plugins. I And I happen to have those. So it was like. Basically, you have to adjust the contrast and just like, then you can use like record stuff on it. Well, I asked a friend, like, hey, do these emotes and stuff, and then I just made that video. Oh, that's cool. And and it helps that you're, like, super into Overwatch, too, which, like, when you're super into, like, a game or a source or a show or whatever, like, it can, it, it, it really helps with uh, wanting to work on that and make it, like, the best video possible, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you could make it without playing Overwatch, though, because it only has the voice lines and basically it doesn't have like insane references or anything. Yeah, but but I guess I'm just saying like if you're if you're super into like uh, into it, like you you want to make it even better because it's like, well, I you know I really really enjoy the series. I I want to make it really good. At least that's how I am. Whenever I do like certain songs, I'm like, I really really love this song. I want to do it justice, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, would you say you you and your videos and your visual style has like influenced other others through the years? Because uh I would say that like you and Botendu were definitely like two of the first and two of the best uh people to do like the YTPMV After Effects kind of heavy visual style. Would you say would you agree with that that you've influenced quite a few others through the years? I have never thought about it, but the funny thing is, I don't use After Effects. Oh, really? Okay, I okay, I use it for one thing, and that's masking. But I don't do anything else with it. Huh? I always assumed that you did like other shit. No, in After Effects. no, no, no. It's all in Vegas, and the three D scenes are in Unreal Engine. That's crazy. I never knew that. I always figured it was After Effects. Huh? Well, I do. I I guess I guess I I you can't do any of that three D stuff in Vegas. But I meant like uh the older like. 2014 2013 stuff i always assumed was in after effects no huh that's cool it's just a lot of pre-rendering yeah did you uh would you say that you and motendu though were kind of like the like two i don't want to say top dogs necessarily because that's i don't know i don't know how to word it but like two two people that like the rest of the community looked up to for uh watch pmv and like heavy visual style I don't know. I don't feel like the people in the community have ever looked me up, but the other outside of it, yeah, definitely yes. But I feel mm. like when you come a popular in this like community, you just get hate. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you experienced that firsthand? I mean, not after like 2012, but not not that much. I'm like really. I already got like uh, so, so much shit in real life, so I'm already like didn't bother to care too much. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty separated from the community, you'd say. Now. Oh, I would, I would still hang there because I wouldn't mind. I just had to be toxic back, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would, I would definitely say that we've improved. Like, uh, white PMV community as a whole has like definitely improved. Well, the, yeah, because the, not yeah. everyone is 13 anymore, but well, it was back then. It's been like 10 years. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of crazy that, um, like, how how nice everybody is now, like, honestly, because, like, a lot of people were, because I don't know if you felt the same thing, but a lot of people around, like, 2015, 2016 kept spamming, like, the whole, oh, YTPMV is dead, YTPMV is, you know, going to quit this. 
nothing for it uh nothing for me in it and everything uh did you feel that around that time well not really because i just kept making videos mm. i mean i don't think half of my viewers even know what ytpmv they think they're meme remixes yeah yeah i would i would i would say that yeah because uh it's kind of an interesting case because uh yeah a lot of people who are into ytpmvs are also people who make ytpmvs or know are pretty like invested in it you know they know what it is but in your case your audience is uh a lot more wider and like you said a lot of people just think that they're meme remixes do you like do you like that having that kind of audience watch your videos or do you really care at all i mean it's just nice that at least someone watches yeah yeah i would agree so how did the kitchen gun collab start well i wasn't hosting it was actually I want to say, but there's a def. I'm definitely made kitchen gun like more white now because the video went viral and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You you were definitely probably the biggest channel that they could have put it on. Yeah, so and that's why we decided to put it there. Yeah, yeah. Did you uh did you enjoy making it and everything, or did you? Uh, did you only do one part in it? I don't remember. I need to look at this. I did uh, one part, and honestly, I I I don't like it at all because what ended up happening was, I lost all my inspiration. I couldn't do anything. Then as soon as soon as I submitted my part and the op call up got uploaded, it popped to my head like exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. So my part, I I don't like it at all because it's really generic. Because I had because after that I had so many like good ideas for it like make a war zone with like add a add a Derek spam head on top of the arnold swansnaker from commando <laughs> and mask that and everything like it was gonna be something like that but it's just so generic now yeah yeah damn that would have been pretty funny i'm just talking about my part but the, but the whole collab itself was really nice yeah yeah i think i think it uh came out really really good did you really feel like, I guess since you, I, I I figured that you had more of an involvement into it. So I don't know if you can comment on no, that. No, I didn't. I actually had really small involvement in it. Mm. But uh, do you do you kind of feel like the collab was almost uh, competing with the Octagon collab in a way? Because they're like similar timing and everything or? Nah, not really. Like it was just, there was no Kitchen Gun collab with, so we made one. Hmm. There's no, you can't like, you can't compete with that thing. It's like too good. Yeah, yeah. That is true. What do you think of the Octagon collab, by the way? Well, I'm actually surprised it even came out because I thought it was a whole thing was a joke because they made so many like uh, coming never things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like surprised that it had people in the credits that I thought that had left like long time ago. Mm hmm. Like, like, let's say, like, deep reads. I was like, wait, this guy did something for this? But I was like, I guess this was started, like, years ago or something. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a hell of a ride. Because uh, I've talked to M Maker about it uh, a little bit. And, yeah, from from his perspective, he, he basically had, like, the same thing. It was like, uh, he he's kind of surprised it even came out. But I think, I think when everybody kind of realizes, like, oh, hey, like... Let's just finally get this over with. Let's just get it done. You know, meet the the August eighth deadline and everything. Cause uh, he had like, M Maker had this like really cool like timeline thing and like a blog basically about it. And uh, like around around like right before the deadline, it really ramped up, and that's when everybody finished their stuff. What was your favorite part in the Kitchen Gun collab then? Would you say? Well, it's the the ending, like everyone else is. Mm, yeah. The take on me. Yeah, yeah. Because it's also based on my video, so it has like even a stronger connection. When I saw like how it looked, I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. It look it looks really really cool. Also, speaking of that, uh, do you like how they made uh all the credits and everything in the spreadsheet and like say exactly who did what part? Uh, rather than like the Octagon collab where they kind of like hide everything and say, oh, you know, these are the people who made it, but we're not going to say who did what part. I mean, I never saw a problem in it. I've always thought like why people want to hide those. Yeah. Because obviously people want to look those up. 
I mean, I kind of get why people want to hide those because, hey, we all did this, like, exactly the same amount, which is, like, a nice thought, but, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Looking at the spreadsheet, you were the only person who did both the audio and the visuals. Yeah, because the audio turned out fine, but then I lost, like, the... The, like the visuals were so like generic for me because I didn't I lost all my inspiration because I had other stuff going on in life as well. Mm. Yeah. Do you find that's uh, a common issue for you? Is uh, whenever you're like wanting to work on stuff and then uh, like life or whatever comes gets in the way. Yeah, it's not really a life. I'm just like I'm just you know adult these days, and it's like I have a I have work to do, and I have my own company stuff to do, and yeah yeah i understand so speaking of that like what do you what do you say what do you think uh the the future is for like you and ytpmb is it just like something is it just gonna stay like this just very casual whenever you feel like it you're gonna make something yeah definitely casual mm. just gonna make stuff when i like i definitely need to make something on june because it's gonna be my 10th anniversary Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, you still you still have a month or two, so. Yeah. But then again, I'm also in another call up that is a really secret one, but it's really big, so Ooh. I have to work on that one as well. Hell yeah! I'm I'm excited for whatever's coming out. I, I yeah, it's it's a really big one. I never know like what collabs are in, or what what collabs are happening. So I I just well, find these out. These are this is a secret one. So. All right. All right. I'll Can't say it. anything more. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to edit that part out, or do you care? Nah, it's okay. because I didn't say what it is, so... Oh, okay, true, true, true. And no one has any idea to know what it is either. Fuck yeah. Are you... Are you surprised that Y2PMV has went on for as long as it did? Or do you do you just see it as, like, it'll never go away, and it, people will just always be making this kind of content? I don't think it'll fully disappear ever. It might it might just decline for a little bit and then it might come back. You you can't know. Mm -hmm. I noticed that uh you were one of the few. I don't know. Maybe you made something on Twitter, but you were actually one of the few white spin V makers who didn't make an Obama video. What do you what do you think of that whole fad? I I was going to make, but it was like the it was sadly on the eight month period, like when I was like really down, that's why I even announced the like get the quitting thing because I couldn't do anything. Mm. But then I took like a really long holiday and stuff, and I was like, "Oh shit, I wanna make these again." Okay. So I wish I didn't even make that like the whole quitting thing. It was so unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you know, you just you just feel a certain way, and then, but yeah, when you take like a step back. You kind of realize, oh, I want to keep doing this shit, because there's a there's a lot of people who have went through those <laughs> went through those phases and closed channels and then reopened them like two weeks later. It happens to everybody just at like different points. I feel like. Yep. But Especially that one Japanese guy. Who I don't know who you're talking about. Mm, Yamas. Mm. Oh. <laughs> 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 well. I don't. I don't know. I don't even know if he listens to this podcast. So I feel like you probably. I mean, he is, he's Coron these days, but. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's closed his channel since the, since he's made Coron. So. Yeah, he actually uploaded all his like five hundred videos on those. Like. Oh, that's cool. So, any more? Uh, who do you derive inspiration from for your visuals and everything? Do you just derive? Do you just uh kind of make whatever comes up to your head or are there like specific creators that you can mention i never get any inspiration from like other creators like or really rarely unless it's a fad but other than that i just like watch movies and then something it's not even related to movies but they help my like brain hmm. yeah, yeah yeah it just kind of gets gets the creative juices flowing as they say mm. There's one thing I need to improve is like the on the storytelling aspect. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've kind of noticed that that's been like a, a an issue for a lot of people. Like whenever they make videos, like me myself included, like uh, it's it's tough to like uh, evolve something from one thing to another without and like have it have it look like cohesive enough. Yeah. 
uh because i know that for the octagon collab um and maker said that they kind of like storyboarded everything that they wanted to do and that they like care they like thought out everything and obviously like you can't do that for every collab or every y2pmv but um is that something that you've you've considered doing is like kind of like sketching things out beforehand before making them or just kind of thinking of stuff as you go I should, but I'm so stubborn. I don't want to learn anything <laughs> new. Yeah. <laughs> well, you learn uh, Unreal Engine 4 for watch PV, so... Well, but that was because I learned it in school, so it wasn't like, I th okay, I'm not going to learn this program. Mm. I don't think I've ever started using it if I didn't go to that gaming game design class. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how it just takes like one little push and then you start implementing it and everything uh so i don't i don't know exactly what you do for like a full-time job but is it do you d use like uh any of this like unreal engine 4 or is this purely just hobby well it's hobby but i do media stuff but it's nothing compared to like what i do on youtube mm, okay that's the main reason why i wasn't like able to do like videos for eight months because my when i job started you would do like six hours of editing at work and then uh, guess what you don't want to do at w when you come home <laughs> yeah yeah that's exactly what omni said because that's that's omni just edits uh in vegas for his job and then he comes home and then he just stares at the he said he stares at the vegas screen he's like oh, i don't i don't even want to i don't even want to look at it which fair yeah i totally understand that yeah, that's, I can relate to that 100%, because first you're like, oh my god, I can do this thing I know really well for my like living and stuff, but then it's like, well, uh, well, this is going to happen now. Mm -hmm. It's almost become an issue for me, and I don't even edit very much. Like, whenever I edit a White PMV podcast episode, which is not not very hard or intensive or takes a lot of thought, I'm just like, ah, I don't, I want to make vid, but I don't want to look at Vegas, so then I just go play dota or some shit and waste more time <laughs> so did you worry about that like before you took the job that you have that it would like interfere with like your hobby or did you really care much you just wanted i didn't even think about that could even happen because mm. i was so happy i got a job because i was unemployed for two years mm. that's why i made a video every month like during that two years because i didn't have anything else to do yeah yeah Speaking of like other stuff that you do, uh, do you still Twitch stream much? Yeah, I stream on a different channel because my audience hates like the games I play. <laughs> they couldn't care less, so I just like I stream Overwatch on like a different channel, but it's like I use it as a, like a relaxation. Mm, yeah, yeah. I could do variety, but it's so exhausting out of everything. I just want to like game for four hours and then I like. There we go. That was my break. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And like doing variety, it's like that in it, in and of itself is a hobby, honestly, because you have to like plan things out and like you know think of like interesting, engaging things. Yeah, what do you think of uh, Valorant and everything coming out now? Do you like Valorant? No, I don't. I don't have appeal. I play a lot of Counter Strike, but if I wanna play something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I have like 10 tk hours in FPS games. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> like I started CS Source 1000 hours, then I have TF2 with 2.5k hours, then CS Go with 2.5k hours, and then then over what's probably 2000 hours at the moment. Probably 3000 if I compare all the alt account hours as well. Damn, that's crazy. Then again, I've been, that's like from 2008, so... It's yeah, like, yeah, that is true. It's around 12 years, so it's not like 10 hours every day or anything. <laughs> yeah, full-time full -time gamer. You want to go through the videos I linked? Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask about the viral videos because I forgot to ask. Well, they're those. not all viral videos, but uh, they're just like visually impressive ones and really technical. Yeah, do you want to watch them together and talk about it? <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, well, let's do that. So, okay, so first video is the well, one of the crash gotcha good ones. Yeah, and you you would describe this as like one of your more like visually intensive. Uh, not, yeah, because uh, there's a really fun technical thing in this. Okay. So yeah, we I, start. 
Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing this one and being real yeah. impressed about it. So we start, so the video is like, well, the map is made in Unreal Engine. And this uh, Bandicoot here, this is just mask from the game trailer. And then Holy I have to shit. replace the background. Damn. And it's like manually dragged into it. So I, I don't have any motion tracking program, so I do all the motion tracking manually. Damn, that that sounds <laughs> that sounds super time consuming. Yeah. So basically now well, now there is just basic gachi stuff going on. Nothing really like impressive. Well, this was a funny thing. I just put the head. Oh yeah. On top of yeah. the grass, and these are just basic backgrounds and a mask. Like that's like what I like to do a lot. Okay, I think here comes like a storyboard. So here is Crash Bandicoot like preparing, and then he's like. Crash Bandicoot wants to steal Billy's motorcycle here, and that's why I made the Billy's like arms red and the Billy wakes up like, what, what, someone is stealing my motorcycle, that is supposed to be like a Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he drives through the portal, oh, my motorcycle now, and now comes the technical part, so all these small things, these are masks from in-game footage, and I'm actually, oh. uh, and the ba how I'm moving the camera, I'm actually a first person character. But I angled the camera such a way that it like, you know, motion tracks it. And these yeah, are just yeah. like, these are just, well, the guys on the car, like, these are video textures in some Unreal Engine. Okay. But rest of them, these, the, all these are just put manually. Like this one put manually, it's just an image background. So basically, yeah, that's pretty much it. All these turns, I mask these manually, and I would like put stuff there. Damn, I would, I would see. That's like something that you would never know uh, when you watch the video. That like, yeah, you, like there was a, the... there was a funny thing. There's Coco taking pictures, and Dark Home saying, "Do you like what you see?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then he finishes the thing, and then he goes to the finish line. Boom. <laughs> but yeah, this is just recorded without the grass, and the grass has been masked from the... Oh yeah, funny thing is, you see the, the things, this is an image, those things are not even moving, I was lazy with that. <laughs> those electric, like, saps, they're not moving at all. Well, I mean, when you, when you mask all that shit, and put it, like, all that, and from the game and everything, I feel like you can have, like, two seconds worth of not trying in a video. <laughs> Especially, right. especially in a video that's a minute 38. Because, like, a minute 38 doesn't sound very long until you start making a video. And then it's like, uh, you know, it just it just keeps going. Alright, and next technical video is through the dirt and tiles. Well, this basically, well, this intro is in Unreal Engine. The video texture is inside the Unreal Engine. These are just particle effects you can find on the, like, in the, in the game. Mm -hmm. In the engine itself. And, uh... And the, then there's overlay, like the most of them. And then there's basic like masking stuff. And here comes the next, like the interesting part. Okay, so here I have modified like the original Guitar Hero game and recorded stuff from it. So Dude. if you notice all the shirt, this shirt is same as Derek Bum's color. <laughs> So so you like you like modded the original like Guitar Hero three game? Yeah, because Guitar Hero three has a con like control panel program you use to add customs, but it also has a texture explorer. Holy shit! So you shit. can just replace the texture easily. <laughs> That's insane! I <laughs> so you can see like uh, if you look under his elbow, you can see the Derek Spam face on the poster there. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And uh, let's keep going. And there is also like next to that poster is the poster of the like the sea like the yeah that stove, like next to it. Uh, basically, so all these are like same colored. And then there's a, like a Derek bum on the background, and the speakers say "gun." <laughs> they do. Holy shit! And the, Damn. there's a poster on the background and the drummer, <laughs> but there's you can't really see it. Also, there's Derek bum faces on those Red Bull cans oh. you can see next to the drummer. And then on the amp, it says kitchen and everything. Damn, yeah. that's crazy. So here, it's just the basic backgrounds made on Unreal Engine comes now. And this is also same. This is a texture replacement, the highway you see here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much it. I just recorded with the bot on, you know. Because the control panel has a bot, so you can record it that way. 
Well, this yeah. is just a scene set up on Unreal Engine. There are, there's actually a whole human body under the like the the floor, but oh it's yeah, that you just can't see. <laughs> well, I didn't have a hand-only model, so you just hide it. You just like, stretch it to go away. <laughs> That's pretty it's funny. Imposed. This is also same thing. Well, the same thing here. There you can see more of the arm on the right side. It goes yeah, goes yeah. Away. Well, this is a stuff put into the background with a lot of like fog settings and everything. And then so, the camera flies through it. So like those like overlay uh, particle effects, are those done in Unreal or were those like afterwards you put those, those in? Those are afterwards always. Okay. That's, that's what I figured. Yeah. But yeah, what else about this video? Well, anything else is like, well, we know already. Just basic editing. Guitar Hero 3 shot, uh, Unreal Engine background flying through it. <laughs> and here's make... the funny... What? Oh, oh, I was just gonna ask, uh, did you make the audio in Vegas or Reaper? Yeah. I don't use Reaper. Damn, just Vegas? I, I figured... I Vega, figured that you used Vega Reaper Vega supports this whole time. VST plugins. It's not that bad. It started as an audio editor. People, like, dismiss it too much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Even, it even has a BMP lock, but you can't change the BPM, so it's kind of like works in certain songs only. But you can, yeah, you can change the BPM. No, I meant like mid song. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that in is... Reaper you can like no, because if you do like old eighties songs, those are not done with like a metronome. It's like a guy playing drums, so you have to like tempo map it and everything. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I use Reaper to make Rock Band 3 customs, though, so... That's cool. So, But I don't use it for anything else. Did you did you know before you made this video that, like, you could, like, texture... Like, change the textures of Guitar Hero and everything? Yeah, because I, I have been playing Guitar Hero customs since the game came out. Oh, okay, okay. It's been, like, a big thing. That's cool. I had no idea that you me. could... That you could do any of that because i knew like i knew about like clone hero and that kind of stuff yeah oh this was way before the car okay this is only the funny part <laughs> it's like he says through the dirt and tiles so i just made a dirty tiles and where the camera to, like flies through them <laughs> and, then... and by the by the way how this how this wall breaks there's an invisible object that just flies through it, it uh, that's the way i broke it Oh yeah, yeah. That's so funny. it's not like it's not like a script or anything. There's just physical object that has made hidden in game variable. <laughs> just flies through it. But yeah, through the tiles he flies there. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much this video. I like the little uh, making their making their heads like the the gun and the grenade. At that last. Yeah. Well, it was like a Syriac reference because I watched that guy's videos a lot. Oh, he's crazy. Syriac is insane. I yeah. love Syriac. All right, let's move on. Next video. There's two more. Okay, this one is the this one is the Unreal Engine video. So I'm a huge fan of Far Cry games in general, and when I when Far Cry Five came out, I was like, I was like, I have to make a gotcha video about this. So basically, well, this is a loading screen reference to the Far Cry 5. <laughs> this, this is basically how the far loading screens are. So this whole thing is made in Unreal Engine. There is, was a, there is a template where you can fly like a glider. So I took that and I made a map for it in the, in the editor. That's a, and that's... Uh, that's pretty much this video is I'm controlling the player myself and recording it real time. <laughs> With like a fixed camera, because I don't, yeah. I don't think I've seen this. Uh, no, you can. No, in the camera, I can move with the mouse. I control the thing with arrow keys. Oh, that's cool. This one is scripted. This intro sequence. This is just a, not like a keyframe camera movement. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a masking. The read button is masked from the in-game footage. That's cool. Well, yeah, this is how you start these missions. I just added catch sounds to it. <laughs> so there's no glider actually in Far Cry 5, but there's like plane routes. Uh, so this was like a reference to the older games where you can use a glider. 
and Unreal Engine just happened to have Collider like game template. So I was like, I'm just gonna use this. Oh yeah, yeah. That, the that hands are from easy. Billy model. You can see it, and it normally doesn't have hands, so I used the Billy Harrington model. Who made uh Who made the Billy Harrington model? Do I d know? I don't remember. It's from the 2018 collab, mm. which we share assets from. Yeah, yeah. Or was this before it? And yeah, this was after. No, this was before it. I think I. Well, there's been a bunch of those I have found from the, like the collabs. Yeah, somebody made it for one of the IWFs and. Yeah, it's been like a, it's an old one. It might be the move then do one he used in like stores, but I I'm not sure. But whoever made it, thank you. So this whole thing is recorded in real time. This actually just gameplay footage of my uh, well said game. That's cool. The only thing I had to code in was the shooting. I actually had to look up how you can make a hit scan weapon in like Unreal Engine. So this is a hit scan weapon when you press mouse one, it shoots from the pipes. Oh, that's cool. That's how I this go down these like lockers here. <laughs> oh yeah, there's on the left. You can see there's a reference to the Crash Bandicoot video. Oh, that's there's cool. There's the, the hot road. The posters are all from the collapse folder. They like zero after the collab comes out. There's just wallpapers I've taken from them. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, see, that's like yeah. something that you you just never even notice. Yeah. But yeah, and then I made an audio with this, and yeah. So I so basically the template works. Whenever you fly a string, you get a speed boost. So I had to like I have to do a test run and make sure I can play through this. So all this camera movement is controlled by me. Damn, that's really cool. And this next part is like there's smoke there, you can see, and the like it turns green and there's the well the CC Laru thing or whatever. It was reference to the Far Cry Blitz if you have played the game. I haven't, no, but uh, well basically there's a villain in the, there's like three villains in it. Uh, basically, one of them ha has like this gas truck, and you go to it, and you start seeing things. Huh. So it's like a reference to that. So Damn. this case, cave cave is full of that gas. We already fly through it. Damn, that's really cool. Yeah. Also, a lot of these models you see are from the Left 4 Dead too. Oh really? <laughs> because I I have a I have a plugin I bought for fifty euros. You can like uh, like when I started my school, you can import source maps and source models to Unreal Engine. Damn! Like the more you talk about Unreal Engine, like the more, the more insane it sounds with like its capabilities. Well, that plugin is not normally part of it, so. Yeah, but I mean, like the fact that there even is a plugin yeah. to do that. You know, uh, and this this guy on the water is just a video texture. But yeah, here's the. I just made a map. I fly through it. I practice it many times. And these like images on the border are just like quickly made like modif with the added with Gatsy character face. Yeah, yeah. They're not that impressive. I made those really quickly because like nobody was gonna notice those anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically you fly through this. Oh yeah, there's a Thomas Papillon one. It just went down, and there's Obama <laughs> as a, one oh. of the villains. Uh, and Magfest. Yeah, that play that plane you see on the left is the from Left 4 Dead uh, one. Oh shit, that's funny. I, I that one that goes down when you start like at the end of the campaign, you know. Oh yeah, damn! I would have never noticed that. What, uh, I was gonna say at Magfest, uh, and Maker had some, like, Thomas Papillon, uh, stickers that he, like, handed out to everybody, so he, like, put them on our badges and stuff. It was yeah, funny. I would, he... uh, I would love to go to Magfest, but I live in Kadam EU. Yeah. I, like, Magfest, oh my god, Magfest is so much fun, hopefully it happens again. But, honestly, like, for the, for the expense that it takes from EU to get there, it probably isn't worth it. Yeah, especially when it's in LA or something. Oh, it's in it's in Washington DC, so it's on the East Coast. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
but uh, yeah, it's still. But yeah, I mean, it's here still you can see the third person, like there's Billy model on the glider. Oh yeah. And the statue is basically Billy Harrington's model. Just I changed the texture because in the in the game there is like a, there is like the main villain has like a, it's basically a god on that state, and there's like huge statues of him. So it has a reference to that. <laughs> that's that's fucking cool. Yeah. And then this video just ends. Yeah. But yeah, that's the most used Unreal Engine video of mine. Yeah, and and like you did a really good job with that. That's crazy. Cuz you pretty much you pretty much just like made a game, put in some references and then just like use that for visuals, which is so like insanely creative because like I don't know. I don't I I don't I don't know of anybody else who has has done anything like that, you know? Probably not like in YTPMVs, but in definitely in other stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, last video. Let's do this quickly. Is the Hanzo one? Wait, I closed the room. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll add it here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so all these like m these are not masks. This is literally green screen from the Overwatch game using that Hollywood green screen. I can actually show a picture of it if you wanna add it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like you said earlier, they're not very easy to chroma key, right? Like yeah, because the lighting on it is so bad. Mm. Yeah, so that's like, in the game. So I, that's when you add use the contrast, you can like use it. Basically, you just have to do some tricks, and it's really usable. Oh my god! But I have like BBC Chroma Key Studio, and that's like the best chroma key plugin ever. <laughs> like I have gotten away with so much stuff with it. Like, I've chroma keyed some, like, really insane stuff with it, because it has so many things you can add used. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, okay, so let's go through this. So basically, these are chroma keyed Overwatch emotes with, from the Hollywood map. Yeah, otherwise, I, I guess the only other option would be to mask them. Yeah, and that wouldn't be fun, because you're recording with 1080p, and it's, like, only part of the screen. Yeah. Uh, this is a highlight intro when he looks at this one is masked because well it only had a white background. I basically when Overwatch had like an university, it would make all the backgrounds when you view the emotes and stuff like white. So mm -hmm. people have recorded those and I used those to mask stuff because you can see everything so clearly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if there's like a big shot of like his face that's masked with a rotor press. I see. And does that take does that take much time? Is it very time consuming? To, no, to... because it has like clear edges. Okay. Because the background is white. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it realizes what what's the thing I'm masking. But these yeah. full body ones, these are like just like uh, these are just like uh, in game emotes. And here's the, just a random Unreal Engine like food that's with a lot of like overlays and stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I do a lot of like, I make a background in Unreal Engine, then I put a mask on it. And then I just put overlay on top of it, that's like my videos in a nutshell. <laughs> but yeah, this was a cool sequence, this camera just flies through. The camera sake is added in like later post-process. I see. Yeah, same thing, all this active camera is like made after, like in the video editor. Yeah, the in, in Vegas. Yeah. I love the way that stuff breaks in Unreal Engine. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a thing feature in it. You can like break objects with that. But yeah, this is just the Unreal Engine footage camera flying through with keyframes with a lot of video textures. And then it's, this is the same footage with mirror effect because it just looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you may as well. Yeah, and then somehow, well. I just added like the warp perspective, but yeah, here you see my video is a nutshell. Mask, mask with the background, mask with the background, like a look, like mask with the background over there. Same thing here, but they're so fast, like nobody notices. Same thing here with with like good lighting. Do you uh, do you make all those backgrounds yourself? No, they're from the Nico Commons folder. Oh, okay, okay. 
No, I, I download those either from YouTube or like the Eustatic of Commons folder. Yeah, yeah. That's what and people have said to me like many times. Like, dude, you can't just use the same ones in every video. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, you're right, but I'm so lazy. <laughs> yeah, especially especially when uh, you're just doing this as like a hobby. It's like, uh, you know. Yeah. But yeah, here's the running animation looped. Like, I made him run, and then I, like, motion track it to be, like, still, and then I looped it somehow. Mm. And here's just, uh, like, uh, well, the background stuff, and then what a perspective to end the video. But yeah, that's, it's really about, like, all that impressive technical stuff. Other videos I'm... have same stuff, but these are, like, the ones that stand out. Yeah, yeah, and... I mean, they're definitely, I, like, I don't know of any other, anybody else who, like, goes that far for visuals. Because, like, a lot of visuals you see, um, are, I would, I would describe as, like, more, like, traditional YTPMV, right? Like, those, yeah. they have, like, every single track, they show everything. This is, like, an entirely different style. It's on, like, a different, it's, like, basically, like, completely separated, almost. And, yeah. uh. True. It's it's really interesting that you've like developed into this because like you can like you can see your progress for through the years and everything get up to this point. So I don't know. It's actually, just it, it's just so cool. I I, I really enjoy it. Actually, well, let's. I want to go through one more video. I just realized. That's fine. It's because it's a serial parody, so have to have one of those. So so this is like a collaboration between three people. So this intro. Is made by like James Key, the, you know, the YouTuber. Yeah. I'm like friends with him, like completely. He made this whole intro scene. Well, the, okay, this one I made. I made these arrows, but everything else he has made until like. Uh, until to the. Until this point. That's cool. My brother is dead. I killed him with my own hands. But yeah, same thing comes here, like, let's go this really quickly, with the in-game mask on the background. Oh yeah, you can see, like, here, like, I think I this had a white background, I just chroma keyed it, and like, you can see, and then I drew the lines, it's so, like, yeah, blurry and everything, the bubble. Mm. But yeah, those la small lazy stuff. I mean, nobody, like, the only people who are gonna notice are, like, other people who make this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah, true. And these images are drawn by uh, Sticky Hunter, who I was like dating at the time. We're still friends, but uh, but yeah, basically she drew this. I just asked, can you draw all these frames with like as a Hanzo, and then I just like animated it by based on those. That's cool. He did a good job. Yeah. Also, these arrows, these are rotoscoped. That I, actually, these are frame by frame mask in Vegas. I think that's how I got the like the behind the character. Yeah, I've always wondered how people made these uh, Suno videos because uh, you know they're 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 all the same uh, based on the original visuals. So I've always well, I just, how I just like mask frame by frame because it's only it's not it's only twenty four FPS because it's animation mm. or even less because maybe even twelve. Oh yeah, here's a funny thing. Like it says you killed something from me when it's supposed to be you took something from me because <laughs> it was like my English is not my first language. So it's just like it sounds so stupid. Like afterwards, I think one guy even pointed it out. It was supposed to be like maybe you should have said like took. <laughs> It's oh, okay. Like it, no. Yeah. It, it, it's, but it it's bothers so, it's me. It's so a good video. It bothers me though. Yeah. I mean, that's how that's how it works, right? You you work so hard on like a video or it, or put it a bunch of time and then you upload it and then you immediately notice like a bunch of shit that's wrong with it. It's like, ah. Uh, yeah. But, but you just have to accept it and move on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Learn from it. Would uh okay. so like of these, of these uh few that you showed me, are uh, which one would you say is like the your like favorite visual uh technically, 
like impressive video that you made which one's your favorite well the crash bandicoot motorbike one 100 percent. yeah because it has, it has a story sequence it has like fun unreal engine stuff and <laughs> everything yeah yeah how uh so like how much time would you say like a a video like that crash bandicoot one took you i don't know i would like i don't know 50 hours i don't know i mm. actually have never tracked but i would make like one video per month so i would be working on it every day so it's really hard to like estimate because i watch shows like at the same time so i lost track of time yeah yeah i know i know how it is uh it's tough it's tough to keep track when you're working on it so so long you just want to get it done you don't even really care about the time but damn those are the like those videos are are fucking amazing now that i know like the background of it and that like all none of this is like like i like i always figured like i knew that you use unreal engine but i guess i never knew to like what extent i always figured it was like to put some lighting on some 3d model or something and then you put that into vegas and then you like go from there but the fact that you do so much in real unreal engine is just super like super interesting and super cool i think yeah it was the when i found out it supports video textures mm -hmm. like when i and even when i found out that it reads video texture alpha channels the same way it would read like a image file that's when i was like oh my god i can just put the masks here <laughs> just make a plane and put a video texture on it and it's like transparent that's fucking cool so at this point now would you say you're quite removed from the ytpmv community or do you just kind of see yourself as like in the community sort of but just like making videos and existing you know alongside it i just make videos and exist i don't really really talk these days to anyone who's part of the community mm. because i'm like part of the like like an overwatch community i interact way more and stuff i hang around those way more yeah yeah I usually there's some fun if sometimes like I don't like go and I don't advertise my YouTube channel there and then some people like found out wait I'm sub to you on YouTube like you're this guy. <laughs> yeah, I I I'm I'm always like uh interested in other people's reactions. I guess like people who don't know what Y2PMV are like their reactions. And I guess your videos are like a lot more uh appealing to the masses uh because like a normal white spmv right like it's just like covering the audio they're like well what's what's cool about this what's funny about this your video is like it's a lot easier to be like oh you know this is just a a remix quote unquote so like uh yeah. what what do your overwatch friends think about your videos and white spmvs and stuff well some still don't know but i mean they're just there some like them and some like don't care mm. yeah so moving forward uh 2020 and beyond what do you what what do you think the future holds for you and YTPMV? Well, I I will keep making them, but just not as active, mm. because I simply don't have time. I'm turning twenty five next month, so. Yeah, time flies, huh? <laughs> yeah, time flies. Yeah, I'm I'm turning twenty one this month, and it's like fuck. <laughs> I wish I was still twenty one. Uh, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm. I'll probably be 25 before I know it and I'll be like, holy fuck. But who knows? I, I just, I'm just surprised, uh, like that I've been part of this community for so long, especially like, I don't know. It just, it just feels like it, it actually was like so close to dying, uh, in 2015 and then Undertale came and then it kind of saved it. And, uh, now we, now here we are in 2020 still making videos and I would, I would say that I'm making my best content. Would you would you say the same right now? Yes. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. So uh obviously people can find you on YouTube at your channel. Uh where else can they find you? On they can find media? me on Twitter at rescue thirty five. Hell yeah. Thank you for listening or watching the Y P V podcast. I apologize for having this episode out so late. Lots of IRL stuff got in the way and Honestly, at this rate, I think it's only going to be one episode per month. It's not that I 
don't want to put more time into this project. It's just that it's not very rewarding when I find much more enjoyment making actual YTPMVs. And this is kind of just something for the community, you know? So I appreciate everybody for listening. And if you could do me one favor, please go follow the podcast on Spotify. Uh, just search up YTPMV Podcast. Give us a follow. It'll help boost boost the numbers a little bit and hopefully maybe here soon i can get the podcast on other platforms big shout out to m maker for hosting the ytpmv podcast on his website so we could put it on spotify and pocket casts without him that wouldn't have been possible thank you have a good day